Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wisco Whiskey Review. My name is Jeff, and in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Red Breast 12 cask strength. Now, with St. Patty's Day right around the corner uh, during the time of filming this, I thought, you know, there's no better way to do this than to do an Irish whiskey. Now, this is a single pot still whiskey, which is a type that is specific to Ireland, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, I'm excited. I've never had this specific expression before. I have had uh, the Red Breast Classic 12 year old, but not the Cask Strength Edition. And that was maybe four or five years ago, so I can't really remember what that tasted like. To get into a brief history of Red Breast, uh, the name and brand started in 1912, but it can trace its roots back to 1857 when the company W&A Gilby was founded. Now that was kind of the company that eventually led into Red Breast. Um, it was founded in London, and in 1866, they moved the company to Dublin, Ireland. Now, W&A Gilby was kind of known to be wine importers and distillers. So, kind of go forward a little bit to 1912, and Red Breast kind of got its name and brand started because the chairman of W&A Gilby was an avid bird watcher, and he had spotted a Red Breast Robin and thought that that was a fitting name for one of the whiskeys that they had been touting for a little while, um, called Castle JJ Liqueur Whiskey 12 year old. So that was what it was called before. Red Breast was kind of a nickname for that whiskey and became known as Red Breast going forward. So that's kind of how that line started. Now fast forward even more to kind of, you know, 1986. That's when uh, W&A Gilbert actually sold the Red Breast brand and name to another company called Irish Distillers. And that's who owns it today. Um, it hasn't changed hands since then. It's imported by a French company um, called Pernod Ricard, which a lot of you, you know, may, may know. They're a pretty big company. They own and import a lot of different brands. So between Pernod Ricard and Irish Distillers, you know, those are kind of the people behind this. But again, it started all the way back in 1857 with the W&A Gilby Company. So now that I gave you a brief history on this one, I'm just gonna go over kind of the makeup and the specs on this bottle. So this is a, like I said before, a single pot still whiskey, which is specific to Ireland. Now that means that the mash bill on this, it's 100% barley, um, but it's mostly malted barley with a little bit of unmalted barley in there. Now that's very specific to this type. There's really no one else that does it. Um, you know, Red Breast isn't the only one that does it, but that specific type, the single pot still whiskey, that's really the only one that uses unmalted barley that I know of. Now that kind of gives it a little bit of kind of a spicy character. It also contributes a little bit more of a silky mouthfeel to it. Um, at least, you know, that's what people claim. Um, again, I haven't had this one before, so I'll have to see if that's true or not. This is coming in at 57.6% ABV or 115.2 proof. So this is a cask strength. Um, the original, the 12 year old uh, red breast, I believe it's 43%, it could be 40. I'll have to you know, check my notes and um, you know, I'll, I'll put that correction when I edit the video. So this is distilled at the Middleton Distillery in County Cork. Now that's one of the very big distilleries in Ireland. Um, you know, they make Jameson, they make tons of different other ones. Jameson being obviously the, the big dog. But there's just tons of different whiskeys that come out of uh, the Middleton Distillery in Cork. And you know, with that, they've kind of safeguarded this, you know, this uh, method of single pot still whiskey distilling for like, over 200 years or something. So it's a big deal. Again, it's very Irish, and I figured that if I wanted to do an Irish whiskey, I wanted to do a review of a good one. I wanted to do it right, so that's why I went with this one. This is also batch B120, which I would imagine means batch one of 2020. Um, I don't know that for sure. I haven't looked into that, you know, to see what the coating means, but that's what I would assume. You know, these do come out in different batches, so if you have a different batch number, you might get a, a slightly different uh, profile or flavor than, you know, if you have the same batch, let's say. Uh, batch to batch should be roughly the same, you know, there shouldn't be any differences, but going between different batches, you might pick up some different notes. All right, so now that I've given you a quick history, kind of gone over the specs of the bottle, Let's crack it open. All 
All right, that took me way too long to get this off. All right, let's, uh, let's go in for the uncorking here. That was, a, that was a pretty good one. I'm happy with that. All right, here we go. This is a, a fresh pour or a neck pour as they like to call it. I'll kind of let this you know, open up a little bit throughout the tasting and see if it changes any. Um, even just letting it sit out for five, 10 minutes can kind of you know, really open it up if it's been sitting in the bottle and you just opened it. So what I'm gonna do if uh, you haven't seen my videos before is I'll grade the nose, the palate, the finish, and the value. And all of those will be from a zero to 10. And then I'll just average that out at the end. All right, let's go in for the nose. Cheers, guys. So right off the bat here, um, I am getting a little bit of that ethanol, a little bit of that alcohol. Now this is the, the first whiskey I've had today, the first drink I've had. So, you know, I think both my, my nose and my, my tongue, my palate is probably gonna have to acclimate, you know, to that, this being cask strength. You know, that ethanol is gonna show up a little bit more predominantly before you do anything like this. So now that I'm going back into it though, I'm getting kind of this like fresh grocery produce smell, which might kind of sound weird, um, but it's in a good way. Um, it's not like a bad <laughs> grocery produce way, but I'm getting a lot of like uh, bright red tree fruits. I'm getting a lot of just like kind of this herbal vegetal thing going on. Now I should also mention too, and I probably should have done this during the specs, but these are aged or matured, I should say, both in bourbon and sherry casks. So yeah, this is just a really, it, it's a complex nose and I'm really liking this. You get a little bit of that uh, kind of oak and vanilla and spice from those bourbon barrels, uh, but you also get a lot of the, the fruit and, and kind of just the yeah bright red fruits from the, the sherry casks as well. I'm almost getting like a, like a red raspberry on the nose as well, which I'm really, really digging. All right, so like I said before, um, or at least in a lot of my videos, I like to nose it, taste it, and then go back to the nose because a lot of times after you've tried it, it kind of opens up a little bit more of those um, flavors and scents that you don't always pick up right in the beginning. All right, this is, this is very good um, right off the beginning. Like I said, there's, there is that ethanol kind of coming through, and I'm sure it'll, it'll be softer once I have some, you know, some subsequent sips here, because you got to get your palate used to it, especially, like I said, if it's your first whiskey of the day and you're going cask strength, it's just really tough. You kind of have to wake up your taste buds a little bit. But I mean, just off the first sip, I'm, I'm really liking what I'm tasting so far. The first thing that stands out to me is those like bright red fruits. And then the spice kind of hits you too. There's just there's a lot of baking spice. There's a lot of kind of, I'm trying to pick out exactly which spices those are. I mean, it's a lot of the same spices that you'd get from a bourbon. You know, a lot of like clove and allspice and cinnamon and nutmeg. But again, it's just really well balanced with that red fruit coming in there. It's almost like a raspberry jam. I could see maybe a little bit of apple, maybe even some like stone fruit, like plum. I'm not really finding any citrus or any like kind of tropical things like that. It does kind of have that stereotypical Irish like shortbread cookie as well. Um, you know, you can definitely tell that this is a, a uh, you know, a barley whiskey, a, uh, a malt whiskey as it were. Oh, this is just really, really good. Um, all right, so let me take down some notes about the nose. I'm almost getting even like a little bit like of a, a ginger zing on the nose. Um, I'll have to see if I find that in the palate too. Yeah, it's kind of there in the palate. I don't know if it's just the ethanol burn, you know, kind of mixed with the baking spice or if it's something else, but I am getting like a little bit of a ginger, maybe some black pepper thrown in there too. Um, there's just a lot of spice coming in on this, way more than I kind of was expecting because, you know, traditionally, if you have just a, a triple distilled Irish whiskey, which Again, I should have noted before, uh, but this is triple distilled. So they distill it once. Um, and most 
bourbon and other whiskeys like scotch are usually distilled twice. Um, once to kind of, you know, just get that first process out of the way and, and to strip a lot of the, uh, the stuff they don't want in there out. And then they do it again to kind of raise the proof and uh, kind of fine tune it a little bit even more to, I guess, focus those flavors and kind of concentrate everything. So most whiskey is a kind of a two distillation process but um, most of your Irish whiskeys are gonna be triple distilled and red breast falls into that category. And they're also distilled in copper pot stills, which again, you know, I'll kind of hopefully explain stills in a different episode, but real quick is that different stills affect the flavor. So you've got um, pot stills, which are one specific um, type of still and a continuous still, which is a completely different animal. When you talk about pot stills, they they claim that it gives whiskey a little bit more character, a little bit better mouthfeel. Um, you know, there, there's just tons of different things going on with the different stills, and uh, I do plan on covering that in a different video, but just know that this is triple distilled and copper pot stills. This does have, to me, a, a creamier mouthfeel. Um, it does have a ton of character coming through. All right, so I'll, I'll try to uh, rate the nose and the palate right now, now that I've done both. All right, so now that I've uh, kind of let this sit out a little bit, I'm noticing a little bit more, um, it's kind of taming a little bit, you know, that ethanol burn isn't quite as prominent. And I'm also picking up a lot more of that vanilla kind of caramel that I'm sure is, you know, more due to the bourbon influence or the bourbon cask influence than the sherry influence. So that vanilla is really kind of peeking its head in here. Yeah, now I'm getting more like of a, a vanilla red fruit, you know, it's, the spice is kind of coming down a little bit and the sweetness is ramped up. So I think, you know, having it open in the air, I think is bringing a lot of that sweetness out. This is just, it's a super complex nose. It's really, really nice. It's approachable. You know, you're really only gonna get the ethanol burn like the first time you go in, you know, if it's your first whiskey of the day. I gotta give this nose an eight. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. It just delivers, you know, with the proof there there's just so much going on and it's all done really well that I got to give this an eight. All right, so now let's do the palette. Um, I'll have another drink and then I'll, I'll rate it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else I can say about this one uh, that I haven't said yet. There's just, there's a lot of spice and fruit going on. So, you know, if you don't like fruit or spice, which, you know, most whiskey is going to have a little bit of that going on. I can't see why anyone wouldn't like this. I'm sure there are people out there that have had this that are like, meh. But to me, this is just a really standout whiskey. Um, honestly, this is one of the better whiskeys that I've probably ever tried so far. There are tons of them out there that I haven't yet, but you know, as of the five, six years that I've kind of been drinking whiskey, this stands out as definitely one of the top ones. And you know, I've, I've got to rate it really high just because of that. It's you know, this will stand out in my mind as, as one that I'll want to buy again. Yeah, it's just super well balanced um, between the grain, that sweet fruit, you know, that vanilla comes out again. There's all that spice thrown in there. It's just really well balanced. Um, I can't say enough about this one. This is really, really good. I'm going to give the palette, and again, this is a really high number. But, you know, I like to have, you gotta have some variation, right? You can't have everything straight down the middle or, you know, just a little bit above the middle. So I'm gonna give the palette on this one a nine. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the finish. And the finish is just the flavors that stick around afterwards, after you've already had it, if it goes away right away, or if it lingers for a long time. So take another sip and then we'll see what kind of sticks around. All right, so it's been about at least 10 to 15 seconds after swallowing this and the finish is just going and going and going. I'd say the fruit is kind of more of along the lines of like the the front end and the mid palate and then on the tail end of it you get this just uh, just baking spice for days again that kind of no, uh, clove, nutmeg, allspice, ginger, black pepper, all of that kind of goes and goes and that's also kind of when the vanilla and the oak um, again, there's not a ton of oak on this, but it does show up a little bit. That's when those kind of rear their head too and, and uh, kind of peek out a little bit is on the, the finish. You don't, I guess the vanilla kind of shows up in the beginning too, but yeah, there's just spice going on for days. 
Uh, so I would put this in the kind of medium to long uh, finish category, you know, and I'm going to have to give the finish an eight because um, I really enjoy it. You know, it's not super sweet. There's nothing weird or like metallic or super tannic or anything like that on the back end, which if you've got like a 12 year old bourbon, you know, it's getting up there. Since this was matured in, you know, kind of previously used casks, you're not going to get quite as much of that like oak presence and as much of that char. So, you know, 12 years, I think is a nice age for something like this. All right. So then the last category is value. Now, I mean, just like with anything, um, you know, the, the nose, the palette, the finish, like all of those value is subjective and value might be a little bit more subjective than most of the other categories because, you know, money is kind of a subjective thing. Now this bottle, um, kind of in my area or, you know, in the Midwest, it ranges around that kind of 85 to $90 range. Um, I think I picked it up for 88 plus tax. And I think that's about average for this bottle. You know, I know you can find it a little bit less than that. I'm sure places charge more than that. The other thing is that there is a rumor that the, uh, the red breast 12 year old cast strength, uh, might be going out of commission or it might be uh, discontinued soon. Um, and with that, they, all they would do is just kind of drop that age statement of the 12 years. Now Redbreast just released a small batch cask strength, which, um, you know, the mash and drum, uh, Jason from there, he did a great review on that one and actually compared it to kind of an older version of the uh, 12 year cask strength. So I'll link his channel and that review down below so you can check that out. But yeah, it's just, it's rumored that this might not be around for too much longer. Um, I don't know if those rumors are true or not. Um, hopefully, you know, they keep making this cause this is a fantastic whiskey in my opinion, you know, for the price 88 bucks or, you know, 85 to 90, I realize that's, that's quite a bit. Um, even for me, that's, you know, that's a decent chunk of change. This definitely is not your daily sipper, right? This is going to be, you know, kind of up there as far as, you know, maybe having it on the weekends or having it you know, once a month for something special, or maybe even just to break out with friends for, you know, a special occasion and things like that. Um, this is definitely a kind of a top tier whiskey, in my opinion. I think for the value, this is still a good buy. Uh, it's cask strength, so you get the proof. And, you know, when I look at whiskeys, a lot of times I look at either the age or the proof and whether that kind of correlates with the price at all. You know, this being 12 year old age statement, cask strength. Um, it's from a really established and, you know, celebrated distillery in uh, Middleton. I don't know, with what it brings to the table, what I've just experienced and what I've just had, I think this is fantastic. So I definitely recommend this one. Um, I'm going to put the value at a 7.5 just because, you know, I know it is a little bit pricier, but I think it definitely delivers on that price. You know, there's tons of other things that cost way more than this that probably don't deliver quite as much as this does. So that's why I'm putting the value pretty high still, even though it's, you know, up there and kind of your, you know, your mid range uh, value or your mid range priced whiskeys. All right. So that brings us to our total. Now, if my math is correct, which hopefully it is, um, I think most times I get it pretty correct, but it's going to be a total of 8.125 out of 10. Now that is a really good score. I think that's a good reflection of this whiskey because to me, again, this is the first time I've had it. I'm excited to see what, what it does once, you know, the bottle gets a little bit lower to see once it opens up a little bit, kind of where it goes to see if the flavors change a little bit, but even just off of a neck pour, which to a lot of people isn't, you know, the best pour that you're going to get out of a bottle. It's usually the worst one just because the oxygen hasn't had a time to interact with the whiskey any, even on the neck pour, this was fantastic in my opinion. And one thing I also want to do quick is compare this to regular Jameson. Um, I went out, I got a bottle. I wanted to have something to compare this to just to make sure that I wasn't rating this super, super high for no reason. All right. So we've got Jameson here. We've got red breast, 12 cask strength here. Now let's compare the two. Now I'm going to have to correct myself if I'm wrong, but I believe Jameson is a blend of malt whiskey and grain whiskey which grain whiskey is, you know, a little bit, it's a little cheaper to produce. Um, it's got a few different characteristics than malt whiskey does. And there's no age statement on this either. Um, 
I don't know exactly, you know, what the, the standard age of Jameson is. I would probably say it's, you know, at least three to four years in that range, but I don't know for sure. I could be wrong about that. All right, so now we've got Jameson over here and Redbreast 12 cat strength over here. Now I'm just gonna compare the two of them just to see what the differences are. All right, so there is a night and day difference uh, between these two whiskeys. You know, it's, and I'm, I'm glad there is, you know, not only because there's definitely a price point difference between these two, you know, again, you can get Jameson probably just under or around that $20 range, maybe 25, um, just depending on where and when you get it. But again, this is, you know, closer to that $90 range. So there's a big difference in price, big difference in availability, but then also just the type of, of whiskey it is is different. They're both Irish, but this is just your triple distilled regular Irish whiskey. This is gonna be your single pot still whiskey. So there's a difference in that this is using uh, partially unmalted barley in its pot or in its mash bill, and this is not. Yeah, this has more of a, um, I mean, not even just the proof point, but this has more of a kind of like a metallic, definitely more of an off-putting nose to it. But I just like the nose way better on this red breast 12 cast strength than I do the Jameson. Um, it just has a lot more spice. There's quite a bit of vanilla and sweetness coming in on the Jameson, but there's also just this like kind of off nose and I, I don't know what it is exactly. It's almost like a kind of a medicinal metallic note going on in the nose. Let's try the palette. So this is your stereotypical Irish whiskey, right? I mean, there's there's really nothing, um, you know, the palate actually drinks really well. I mean, I wouldn't say it's like drinking water necessarily, but it's, uh, it's very easy, I'll say. I don't wanna use the word smooth because that kind of gets used a little bit too much in my opinion. Um, but this is just a very easy drinking, um, just really kind of well rounded out. You know, there's, there's nothing in here that's really popping out to me. Um, it's hard to distinguish kind of uh, certain flavors, you know, to pick them out in this one, just because it is so well-rounded. This I'd say is a, a great daily sipper. You know, again, there's really, I don't think there's anything wrong with Jameson by any means. It's, it's great for drinking, uh, great for sipping, but you know, I wouldn't feel bad about mixing this one as well, which I'm actually hopefully gonna do a, um, an Irish meal video here very shortly as well. Um, but this just this doesn't wow me like this one does so far and I'll 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 sip this one again It's night and day difference, you know to me if you're looking for a special sipping whiskey an Irish one I would definitely go with the red breast 12 cask strength. I want to try the regular uh, red breast 12 Just to compare it because I've heard that the 12 cask strength is just like the 12 but ramped up in flavor There's just so much more spice um, and fruit, but mostly the spice that I'm picking out in the red breast versus the Jameson. Um, you know, the Jameson is just kind of a, a sweet grain forward, just kind of everyday sipper. You know, there's not a lot that's standing out in this. Um, you know, it's kind of, it's a good background whiskey, I'd call it. You know, if you're just drinking something where you're not really trying to pick out the flavors, you're not really, um, you know, trying to explore a lot, you know, you can just sit down and drink this and it's just, Again, very easy sipping. This one, on the other hand, you know, is if you have someone over or you're sitting down and you really want to explore something, really want something diverse that's going to keep you guessing and, you know, just open up with all these different flavors, this is the way to go. But these are both great whiskeys. You know, they're both classic uh, Irish. Again, even though this is single pot still and this isn't. So they're different styles, but they're very classically Irish whiskeys. Um, I hope you guys like this video. Uh, comment down below, please like and subscribe. That really helps me out. I'm trying to grow my channel this year uh, so I can get more videos out to you guys and just get different content. And uh, you know, if you wanna see something specific, let me know. Again, I'm gonna be trying to get some different cocktail videos out to you guys. Um, obviously more reviews, um, different you know blind flights for you guys as well. Please comment, like, and subscribe. I hope you guys have a good St. Patrick's Day. Be safe, have fun, um, drink responsibly, of course. You know, I want to, I don't know that I've ever said that in my videos before, but now's a good time to say it. So drink responsibly, have fun, and you're going to have to excuse my Irish here, but, uh, 
you know, their way of saying cheers is slancha, so slancha.